Good evening, ladies, as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with some more Hearthstone Arena in Goblins vs. Gnomes. I'm at 5-2 and two in this Druid. Pretty mediocre deck, not very good, but uh, made it up to 5-2 and two mostly on the basis of, I think, bad players flooding the arena with their free arena tickets, and of course with the uh, release of Goblins vs. Gnomes, which makes the arena, I think, a lot more fun. So far, I um, even like Goblins vs. Gnomes better than Nextramus. Um, part of that is that the cards are just strong. But partly it also adds some um, some some variety to the game in a way that Nextramus didn't quite do it. I mean, I like the Nextramus expansion, but I like the Novels vs. Gnomes even more so far. You can see I'm playing with some pretty bad cards, no no doubt. Uh, we're going to just mulligan everything but Mr. Wolf. It's going to be a stretch to get to seven wins for sure, but uh, with, the, with the, the player base being weaker, I, c I could have a chance. Um, this is not the greatest hand, admittedly. But Druid versus Hunter is a fundamentally good matchup, so I can skate by a little bit on that if I'm a little bit lucky. Let's see. Okay, I am not lucky at all. That's just the worst thing I could have possibly hoped for. What I'm going to do here is think. I could play out the wolf, let the zombie chow kill the wolf, and shapeshift on turn two to kill the zombie chow. I got nothing else going on. I'm just going to do it. Got nothing else going on. Might as well be done. Of course, I'd rather have had a 3-2 here, but it's just got to happen. I've got Starfall, so I can maybe do some board clearing later on. Are you goddamn kidding me? So there's two zombie chows. Oh, my God. Dan gives me a commiserating, frowny face. And, of course, I get a two-drop, Nat Pagel, but now is not the time for playing Nat Pagel. I have to uh, kill off his minions as quickly as I can, especially because Nat could have would have just died. I will play Nat next turn. Um, but hopefully I'll actually get something better. This is very, 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 very bad. If I play Nat, I mean, the Panda then would have to put him back in my hand, and I really can't afford to not play the Panda. It's just terrible. Can I get something? All right. That's better than Nat right now, so we'll do this. Would have liked this, you know, two turns ago. Or just actually one turn ago. No. Well, two turns ago I would have needed it, so I could have played it in response to Zombie Chow. Got a Yeti here, which is awkward because I cannot use Starfall on it yet. I, I don't have enough mana. Oh, boy. So I can play the Panda, which trades with the Yeti, but it would require me to put this back into my hand. Um, this I can play and not have to put anything back in my hand, so we're going to go for it. Deal as much damage as we can here. Dan thinking, I think I saw you drop this deck. Uh, it was a bad draft. All right, so he decides to trade, which I'm pretty happy about. I'm back to almost full. Hey, it's a former student of mine. Great. How's life? All right, luckily he's not doing much except killing my stuff, and thanks to um, the zombie chows, I'm at somewhat full health. We both got... Um, what's his face? The... Oh, wait a minute. Hang on a minute. We both got um, these spare parts. I obviously have no idea what he has. I can actually play Druid of the Claw and then this next turn, which would kill the Yeti, but no, we're just going to do this. Hopefully there's no more deadly shots in this guy's arsenal. <laughs> Alright, so let's see what he's got. Does he have a deadly shot? I really hope not. Looks like he doesn't. I'm pretty okay with Sludge Belcher. Really not a big deal. He hasn't used his um, spare part yet, which I'm just fine with. Alright, uh, let's think about this here. I could Starfire this thing. Use this to kill the Sludge. This would be a 4-1. What's better? I could play the panda, but then the sludge doesn't die. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, let's not do anything super... F Actually, I could play the wolf. Trade that in. Play the wolf rider. Mm. I'm trying to see if there's a way I can kill the sludge um, and the yeti. I mean, I could obviously play starfall. That would just clear out the board. I could play wolf, trade the claw in for the sludge, and there's a taunt which prevents me from shapeshifting to kill the yeti. I've got four mana left over. Can't do it. Okay, so um, the interesting thing about the spectator mode is that your spectators can actually give you advice, which I guess means that it would have to be turned off for tournaments. Um, Dan suggests the star falling everything. It's a possibility. I'm actually going to go ahead and use the star fire here. So this isn't quite as reliable as star falling because it leaves this creature alive, but he didn't have a way of killing it last turn, so I don't see why that would change. 
this turn. Thus, I'm going to hope that this Druid of the Claw can still trade with that Yeti. And I've got a decently high health total. I'm also a Druid, so I negate partially his hero ability. I feel like my chances are good if I can just weather the storm here. He's got six cards. One of them is a spare part. I don't know. Give the minion plus one attack. I, the spare parts, obviously, none of them are that great. I don't know what they all are. I should really look them up so I can make some informed choices or at least more informed choices. But um, one plus one attack for one mana for free. It's not it didn't cost me a card. It just came for free with the, with the Chillwind Yeti. is fine. And it does lend some more oomph to this Wolf Rider. Dan uh, comments that my play was better than the Starfall. I'll say I hope so. Okay, chatting with two people at once and playing and making a video is getting a little bit stressful. All right, here we go. We got this shade. That could be a little bit scary just because I don't have any taunt to stop it. I could actually play Starfall to kill it, and that is something I really need to consider here. If he lets this go big and doesn't, and um, just lets it sit there, I'm not really putting any pressure on him. So there's a chance he could just let it go really, really big and then kill me with it if I don't get any taunts at some point. Now, what are my other options? I could, of course, play the Wolf and Frostwolf Warlord or Nat Pagel and Frostwolf Warlord. Nat Pagel's a bit of a risky move here um, because it's, you know, giving me card advantage when what I really need is to take out, take care of his board. So I have to judge how dangerous is this shade versus um, the potential of him having a bunch of stuff later that I'd want to Starfall. I am going to go ahead and play Nat and the Frostwolf Warlord. I don't want to hang on to this guy and like, try to get him to be bigger later or anything. I just want a 5-5 right now. And I'm hoping that he takes the time to whack Nat with the shade and leaves it exposed. If he decides to let this thing keep growing, then I'm going to potentially be in some trouble. Okay, so he keeps it hidden, is that right? And we'll see here. Swap a minions. Oh, that was pretty effective. So his spare part that he got actually killed my gnat for free. Okay, so he decides to reveal the shade. He's just going to try to burn me down here. Got to think. I could play the Wolf Rider and the Cult Master. Throw the Wolf Rider into the Abomination to get a card. But I just don't think I really need cards here. I think I just need to kill his stuff. So I could shapeshift and hit the shade, but that'd be a little bit greedy because I'd be taking some more damage. I don't really want to do that. The only question is, do I leave this Warlord alive or not? I think the answer is, I'm going to go ahead and keep my Warlord alive. So we're going to play Whirling Blades to give plus one attack to my Wolf Rider. That lets me kill the Abomination. Um, now, I'll give a boost to my Warlord and use him to kill off the Shade. So... Explosive Trap and Multi-Shot would both be really good here. I didn't want to Shapeshift to kill the Shade because I didn't want to take any more damage. He's got a Kill Command, which I'm really delighted about because that is not the optimal spell to use to kill a 6-1. And he's got a Ventrico Mercenary. That's a little bit scary. I can thankfully kill it. So it's it could definitely have been worse with Starfall plus the Shattered Sun Cleric. And I am just going to do that. I don't want to leave that thing alone and um, there's no better way of killing it that I can see here. Okay, so we'll play the Cult Master. Forward. Throw that in for a card. See if I get a better way of killing it. Uh, nope. Savagery is bad. So we're going to Starfall. This guy, it's uh, not optimal. Kind of like him using Kill Command to kill my Warlord wasn't optimal. Him using Starfall like that wasn't optimal either. It's a really scary game. As a Druid, again, it's nice that I have Shapeshift to maybe counteract some of these steady shots, but I haven't actually been Shapeshifting. I've just been sort of counting on it. This is great to see because it's not super offensive. And he has a Cult Master, which is, of course, very clever because it means he gets a card out of it, but that's fine. There are definitely worse things that could have happened there. All right, I'd love to be able to use Savagery to kill this Cult Master, so I'm going to see if I can actually find Claw or Savage Roar to be able to do that. I can't. All right, looks like he's going to be getting his card from this Warden. I do need to try to clear his board if possible. Let's see, I could do... Three plus four is ah crap! I can't kill. I can't kill this cult master. Shoot, I can't kill it. Mm. No, nope, there's no way for that to die that I can see. Cause I can deal five damage to this, but you know maybe I shouldn't have. Well, if I didn't have this play this inventor, then I wouldn't have had the stormwind knight. So I don't know. I wouldn't have been able to kill it no matter what. 
Okay, this sucks, but we gotta do it. So I'm gonna play the wolf. We're gonna hit. And... I don't need the bonus from the wolf on that, so we'll hit that there. Give him his card. Now he can hit me down to 8 damage, down to 6. I might just die to burn here. If I'm a little bit unlucky, because the Cult Master's 4 attack is really useful. And I needed I needed taunt. He didn't find... He, he actually gets, he gets a mind control attack. This thing has charge. He can attack with it right now. So he's just gearing up to, to kill me. He missed a chance to actually give this plus 2 plus 2 in taunt, so that's a little bit of a... Of a help, and he gets a card from the cult master. Man, that cult master warden was just so bad for me. Now he's got tons of attack power. I still don't have any um, taunt. Oh god, <laughs> Dan thinks he's bad because he's doing. He would have done different turns. Well, I'm the one who's going to lose. So this is difficult. I can of course attack the spider, and then Starfall will kill off the spiders, but. Uh, this is awkward. Okay, how do we do this? I think what I have to actually do is Starfall first. To, um, wait. Because mm, I can use Savagery to kill one of these, but I'd rather use Savagery to kill that. Um, but I really need to, I really need to kill off his big minion, so I have to, I have to use the wolf to kill his harder hitting things. Yeah, so we're gonna do the Starfall first. Then Shapeshift. Use Savagery to kill that. Use the Wolf to kill that. Use Shapeshift to kill that. I get to play this thing. The problem is because his Cult Master gave him two cards and he got an extra card for Mind Control Tech, I've completely lost all my all the card advantage. He now has me on the ropes and three cards in hand. He If he had like one card here, I might think I have a chance of winning, but if he's got three, I'm in trouble. All right, two, five. That's actually a pretty cool card. I'd love to have it. And he's got beef here. I mean, he's just got juice. Which is a problem. I need taunt, and uh, I don't have it. Do I have any taunters in this deck? I have Starfire. Can't target this thing though, so I have to target that guy. Ogre Brute is not exactly what I needed here. What do we have here? Freeze a minion. That's actually um, that would be good if I could use it on that, but I can't because it can't be targeted. Hilarious. Oh god. Okay. It's bad that I'm not shape-shifting, but I couldn't afford to. So he's got 5 damage guaranteed. I'm into 4 health. He also has a mechanical part of some sort, and he has Gladiator's Longbow. God damn it. Oh, man. Oh, I needed just... I needed a little bit of a breather, and he gave me a few breathers early on when he didn't have anything, but I just had a very slow hand. Well, shit. That sucked. So, now... I lose with five, and this will be my first time ending an arena in Goblins vs. Gnomes, so let's see what I, whether I get a regular pack or a Goblins vs. Gnomes pack. I have no idea how they're doing it, whether it's 50-50. I don't imagine you get to choose. I did get a Goblins vs. Gnomes pack, that's excellent, and actually a pretty good amount of gold too. That's a pretty nice five win prize. Okay, since I don't have the Goblins vs. Gnomes yet, let's go ahead and open up the packs. This is the classic pack I don't really care about. The reason I have four, by the way, I didn't buy them. It's just that uh, I got three for free when I signed in. I think if you logged in during the launch event, you you got three free packs. All right, so let's actually look at some of these cards. Even though this is a normal pack, here's the guy that was useful against me in that game. A regular Murloc. Deal four damage to a random enemy minion. That's cool for a nice mage spell. Alternative to Frostbolt. Has plus two attack while you have a mech. Interesting. So there's a mech aggro deck possible now, and uh, that's cool. Pretty expensive, but this is actually better than the healer, the priestess of Elune, for sure. So uh, that's cool. I'll be looking at some of the cards. With, uh, I like this animation too, by the way, but I'll, I'll be looking at some of the cards just because I don't know them all yet. Draw a card if it's a beast, it costs four less. Clever. Another flame cannon. Got all got those taken care of. Whatever character is healed, do a one damage turn. Ooh, nice. And there's the yeti. Golden common. Woo! I get plus one, plus one. That's awesome. I like that a lot. All right. Hope to see some of these cool commons in the arena at some point. One of the problems, of course, with these mech cards is in the arena you're less likely to have mechs. But Snow Sugar. There's the brute. Velen's chosen. Give a minion plus two plus four. Wow. Well, it's kind of like a mark of nature, I guess. But instead of taunt, you get some extra attack and spell damage. I don't know. Tough call. I think I would rather have the taunt most of the time. 
Take control of a random enemy secret. Oh my gosh, there's an anti-secret card. That's incredible. All right. Uh, Battle cries, by the way, happens bef happen before secrets trigger, so this would um, counteract things like snipe, for example, and mirror entity. Taunt, choose one, plus one attacker, plus one health. Oh, that's nifty. I like that guy a lot. I wish I had gotten him in the arena, actually. That would have been handy. Druid of the Fang, if you have a beast, transform this minion into a seven. Wow, that's some nice commons that I could have gotten and didn't. Ogre Warmal, 50% chance to attack the wrong enemy. Ah, oh, that doesn't look good at all. I don't think I'd want that. And there's a, we've seen a salty dog. Okay, cool, so I got some new cards. Uh, let's go ahead and start another arena run. Bompity bop, bibbity boop. So it's gonna be Warlock, Priest, or Rogue. I think Warlock of these classes is the one I'm definitely the least excited about playing. So what I'm going to do is I'll still try to pick the class I've played with the least, but of the ones that uh, are tied, if it's a tie, I'll pick the one that I'm best with rather than the one that I'm worst with. So Warrior is the class I need to play. Hunter and Mage are the classes I don't need to play. So I can actually pick any of these that I want. And that's an easy choice. I'm not a big fan of Warlock or Rogue, so we'll just go ahead and do Priest. All right, starting off with... Oh god, um, junk, but I guess Bomb Lobber looks okay. Deal 4 damage to enemy. Alright, sure, let's do it. If they only have one, it's pretty good. We got Puddle Stomper, which is just a 3 2 for 2, that's a Murloc. Uh, I think of these, I'd rather most have the Loot Hoarder with a card draw. Silence is pretty good. This guy I was not impressed with at all in my first run. Spellbreaker, Silence is still good. Ships Cannon, whenever you summon a pirate. Well, I don't think I want to go for pirates, so we'll just take a Chill Wind Yeti. Oh, God. All right, in my vision it is, because that card's playable. So Power Word Shield or the Gnomish Inventor is a tough call. Gnomish Inventor, I think, is the better card for drawing cards, but because um, the 2-4 body is oftentimes quite relevant. But Power Word Shield is, of course, cheaper, and I've also I've already got a couple of 4-drops. But you know what? Good 4-drops win game. I'm going to take the more powerful card there. All right, North Strike Cleric would be really cool. And this guy, this guy actually seems pretty cool as well. Yeah, this guy seems really nice. It's a cool 1-drop. I, I, I like it. I dig it. But I'm going to take Shadow Word Death because you can't pass on Shadow Word Death. All right, can you, should I take a second Shadow Word Death? I'm going to take Cult Master because that's really, really good. And two Shadow Word Deaths can sometimes be a problem. All right, give a friendly mech plus four health. It's a 5-5 five, five, for five otherwise. I may or may not have any mechs. I guess you should try to take some mechs nowadays to be able to draft these sorts of cards. But Shadow Boxer seems fine whenever a character is healed, so it's anybody. All right, I'll take that. That looks pretty good. Looks very good. Light of the Naru, restore three health if the target is still damaged. Summon a Light Warden. Oh my god. I gotta go. The other things are junk. I'm gonna take... That seems really cool. Uh, Light Warden is, is, is a fun card to play with. Okay, so here I gotta make a tough choice. Obvious call, obviously, is the North Track Cleric. The thing is, um, I've got a lot of card draw here. I've got the Cult Master, Gnomish Inventor, and Mind Vision, and Loot Hoarder. I mean, I've got a lot of ch cards here. I'm tempted by this tiger just to have a big, big, beefy minion that can close out games. But no, we're going to take the North Star Cleric for the early game. I think it's pretty strong for that. Target Dummy. Well, it's better than Wisp. That's about as much as I can say about it. Honestly, these things are pretty junky, so I'm going to take it, although I'm not that happy about it at all. Another Light of the Naru. Um, I don't want to take this. I don't have any mechs. The Ancient Mage isn't good. I guess I'll take it. So I got two Light Wardens, kind of. I have to, you know, I have to meet a condition. I have to be more damaged to be able to use it. Okay, so I've got two really solid three drops here. Um, I don't know which one's better, honestly. Probably the Cultist, I'd say, in general. But Mind Control is an interesting choice so that in the end game I have a chance to pull things out. I'm going to take the Cultist here. Hopefully I'll just get a, another um, Mind Control later. Summon a random two-cost minion. I think that's better than the Salty Dog, honestly. So I'm just going to take it. Okay, I have another chance for mind control, but I'm going to grab Boulder Fist Ogre. Get a nice, big, beefy dude. Do I want another silence? I don't think so. I think I'll take... Well, hang on. I, I want some two drops. But I actually got a lot of ones. I've got Northshire, the Mind Vision, the Target Dummy. Got a couple of twos. I can do the Slight. I'm going to go ahead and just take a, another Chargy dude. Or a Chargy dude. I don't have any of those yet. Holy Smite's great. Obviously going to take that. Felon's Chosen or another Yeti. Now, this is where I maybe have a little bit too many four drops. But do I take it over this somewhat questionable looking buff spot? Well, let's try it for education. I think for per reasons, this four would have been a little bit greedy. All right, uh, I can take the Abomination for some more removal, mass removal, kind of like a delayed Holy Nova. Definitely don't want Matter Bomber. All right, we'll try it. 
I'm, Master I wasn't that excited about. I don't want another Cult Master. Archmage is okay, but I'm going to take Tidehunter just because I need some more two drops. It's not my favorite one, but that's the one I'll take. Raging Organ, I'm not that jazzed about, so we'll take the Squire. Okay, I think I've passed enough mind controls. Let's see, but oh, go give a minion plus. Oh, whoa, I haven't seen this before. Give a minion minus two attack this turn. So it's going to be wasted early on. Eh, doesn't seem that great. I'll take mind control. Let's I see some end game cards. Okay. We could take a big beefy taunt, which I don't have that much taunt here. Or I could take this guy. Let's go ahead and take him. That seems like a cool, cool dude. We'll take a buffing card there over the Rocketeer. Felon's chosen. I already took this one over a Yeti. This stuff's trash. So I'm taking another one, but I am not happy about it. Oh god, this is bad. Salty Dog's problem is it's just so easy to kill, but Elven Archer is bad, and I don't want silence when I've already got a spellbreaker. So I guess we're taking Salty Dog. I'm not that jazzed about it. All right, here we'll take a Power Word Shield to protect my North Track Cleric. Don't like these cards. We'll take another Goblin Stalker. And we're ending with... Oh, let's think. I'm tempted by the Sunwalker, but I've never seen Lil Exorcist before. Taunt, Battle Cry gain, plus one, plus one for each enemy Death Rattle minion. Wow, that's weird. So it's kind of like a Tauren Warrior where it's a 2-3 three for 3 with Taunt. That's sort of mediocre is what this looks like, but it can be good under some circumstances. No, we're just going to take Sunwalker, Texas Ranger. So I got a slightly high curve here, 6 cards at 5 or more, so I really can't complain about Endgame. With that said, I think my card quality issues did come up a little bit. Maybe I could have drafted better. There was a little while ago someone who posted the extremely helpful and very constructive comment, you are a terrible drafter, so thank you. Uh, YouTube viewer for enlightening me with your immense intelligence and constructive criticism. So maybe I could have drafted that a little bit better. Um, ended up with a slightly better curve. I got a kind of flat line here. One, two, three, four, which is usually not good. But we'll see. Alright, got a target dummy here. Do I keep that out? Uh, I mean, sure. It'll stop the recruits from attacking. I drew my mind control, which is good in a way because it means I'm not going to redraw it now. So we've got uh, turn one, turn two, turn three play. Obviously, I'd rather this be an actual one mana minion. Instead of a target dummy. I'll play it, whatever. I could have held on to it, I guess, and seen what he was going to do. This actually might be a decent way for rogues to trigger combo. Because it's, un unlike Wisp, it's actually, like, borderline playable. Alright, he's got a loot hoarder. So that's actually really good for him. Because he gets to kill my dummy. And my loot hoarder doesn't, doesn't gain any advantage over him. Because they, we both get cards out of the deal. That's a bit unfortunate. He's also going to get, at the very least, a recruit, which will get to stay on the board. Not on He's going to give that guy Divine Shield. Okay, so now things change a little bit. Now I'm going to trade my Loot Hoarder in for his Argent Protector. And see what I get before I make any commitments. Sunwalker. Okay, we're ready for the end game. He's used up his coin, so no True Silvers here. Um, we'll see if I can maybe trade this in profitably. The weird thing about this guy is the 3-4 is great stats, but the 4 means he actually is kind of hard for you to kill him yourself. So it's hard for you to engineer the trades to be profitable. Alright, I think what I'm going to do is just keep it simple, keep it safe. We're going to bop this loot hoarder twice. Get rid of that divine shield and let him do as he will. So he's got a lot of cards, 7 cards to my 6, soon to be 7. But I've got some decent stuff coming up. This Abomination, I think it could have been an Imp Master, which would have been good against a Paladin. Maybe that would have been. And with a Cult Master as well. I think actually I, this, this is a bad draft. I could have... Uh, I think I, I think I saw the Imp Master after I saw a Cult Master, which would have been some nice synergy to have. Anyway, if he has Hammer of Wrath, True Silver Champion, or co even Consecration, any of those would uh, let him get some more advantage and build on his already good situation. But if he just plays a minion here, I could actually play Cult Master and maybe clear his board and get ahead. Let's see how this turns out. Ah, fuck, he has it. Well, he's got to kill the cult, Dark Cultist last, of course. So that he doesn't get... So I don't get the bonus health out of it. Alrighty. Well, let's think. If I heal this up and play Power Shield, it can kill this recruit and survive. But then I can't do anything else. Playing this was really, really dumb here. I think what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to play the Gnomish Inventor. Get a card. I'm going to then put Power Word Shield on the Gnomish Inventor. Get another card. 
I'm gonna kill off that recruit. So my thinking here is True Silver Champion now can't kill this No Mission Venter. And if he kills the Cultist, the No Mission Venter gets bonus health. The big, big, big threat is if he has a Stampeding Kodo that can just kill this thing. And then he's gonna be way ahead. But if he doesn't have a Stampeding Kodo, once I drop the Sunwalker, I'm in really good shape. That opens me up to then play Cult Master and Goblin Stalker. I could even play Cult Master and Goblin Stalker this turn if I wanted to, but I doubt I'm gonna, after this Cultist is dead, have a good opportunity to use the Cult Master right away. This is vulnerable to a lot of things. Silence, just all kinds of stuff. He's got a secret, which is annoying because that means Noble Sacrifice would be very good here. He actually elects not to kill off the Dark Cultist. Very interesting choice. Very interesting choice. I have to think very carefully here. So I could just play the Cult Master, run the Dark Cultist into the No Mission Venter, get a card, either this or my Cult Master gets plus three health, and then I just play the Stalker. I could also play the North Strike Cleric, heal this guy up, run it in and my No Mission Venture in as well to kill it that way. I still get a card. I have three mana left over. I could put Velen's Chosen on something. I think it's actually better. The no well, the North Strike Cleric would then die. Unless I gave it Velen's Chosen. Oh man, I think I'm gonna try it. Let's see how this goes. So we're gonna heal that up, get a card. He should have really killed this, this thing, I think. Right, we're gonna go ahead and run that in. Don't let Paladins keep creatures. And uh, yeah, let's try this thing out. So my North Strike Cleric is a 3-7. Oh, by the way, we know that now that's not a Noble Sacrifice and it's not a Redemption. It's also not a Repentance. Which means it's either Eye for an Eye, which is very unlikely, or Avenge, which is much more likely. So I gotta keep that in mind. You can now kill the Gnomish Inventor, of course. This Dark Cultist has been much better than I think a Harvest Golem would have been. Although the Harvest Golem would also not have been a tempting target for the True Silver Champion. I can't remember if the 3 power mattered or not, but... The health definitely mattered because it made it made it a healable target for the North Shire Cleric. But what if a Stoker's looking good? Paladins do have a hard time against Ogres. And the Sunwalker as well. I, I mean, if I can just stay even and get my six drops out, I've got really good good shot of winning this. You'd have to have much better big minions while also dealing with the fact that I'm ahead on the board already. One thing to remember about Velen's Chosen is it does give the minion extra spell damage. I didn't see any Holy Novas, unfortunately. Didn't see any Shadow Word Pains. This draft was missing some key cards. I think I only have a Holy Smite that that actually matters for. Wonder. But giving a minion plus two plus four is decent. I mean, that's two plus two plus four. That's, that's a minion right there. All right, he's just got a big old thing. He will kill off my Gnomish Inventor, which is eminently reasonable. I don't have enough damage to kill off the Archmage, unless, of course, I top deck a Shattered Sun Cleric. So the question is, do I play the Shattered Sun Cleric, or do I choose to drop one of my big minions instead? Well, if I play Cult Master, I can get a card, but if I heal, I can also get a card without having to drop this Cult Master. So let's go ahead and just kill that thing, shall we? Gonna... Wait, no, I gotta do the order correctly. I'm gonna hit him right here. Because if I buff this and heal it, it still dies. See, so yeah, I'm going to hit him there. Then heal to get my card. Holy Smite doesn't quite do it, unfortunately. Now I play the Shattered Sun Cleric. Buff that up. Kill that. Give a minion plus three health. It's unfortunately not the North Track Cleric, but we'll do a Goblin Stalker next. I'm very happy with this draft choice. I think I could have taken some 4-drop over it. Instead, I've got this dude. He's got 7 cards in a probable avenge. I still haven't hit him in the face to know if it's eye for an eye. Remember, secrets don't trigger on your turn, so when he hit me with his weapon on his turn and damaged himself, the eye for an eye would not have triggered if that is what it is. Got this abomination, which I'm not jazzed about. I, I That was a misdraft. I should have just taken mm. Imp Master. I don't like Imp Master or Abomination very much, but I really have never liked Abomination, so I probably should have just trusted my gut instincts. This buffing stuff's working out pretty well for me. Cultist was great. I'm happy that I took that over the golem. I know some people would have drafted differently. The uh, Velen's Chosen over the Yeti ended up being pretty good. Holy Smite now deals three damage. That could actually matter. I've got three minions out in case of Cult Master. Problem is, I'm actually doing such a good job buffing my minions and keeping them alive that Cult Master is hard to make use of. My opponent, though, I think he's thinking a lot on this turn because he's struggling to find something good to do. So I feel good about my chances in this game. Good indeed. What is it going to be? 
Consecration doesn't work at all. Hammer of Wrath doesn't really work at all. Even True Silver Champion can't kill anything right now. Seems really stumped for options. He just decides to play a 5 5. Pretty, pretty decent choice. Okay. So now he has two creatures out, which means once I use a uh, kill a minion, he's going to pop the Evangelist. will become an 8 7. Uh, so for that reason, we're going to play the Sunwalker and make him bump into that. I should have healed first. Always draw cards first, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it doesn't matter, thankfully. We'll kill him like that. Hit him in the face. Okay, yep, yeah, never mind. It's, it's definitely Avenge. As I figured. Start getting some damage on. Pass the turn. Okay, well, let's see if he can deal with this. If he can have a um, freaking mind control attack like that Hunter did in my last game. To secure the victory. Or any other wild shenanigans. Silence would be pretty good, though. Of course, he would have used silence ages ago if he had it. Hmm. Uh, looks like he doesn't have any ready answers like a mind control attack or a silence. Hammer of Wrath? Hammer of Wrath, yeah. This has just not been a very good time to have Hammer of Wrath. So he goes up a card, but he doesn't need cards right now. He needs answers. Can he get past this Sunwalker is the question. That's a really shitty voice acting. He decides to keep the tiger hidden. Interesting. I don't know if I would have done that. I guess he's hoping he can pop the divine shield with one of these spiders or something um before and rather than having to use the tiger and take four damage which i guess is an interesting idea this thing has a maximum i think of five health yeah so i don't want to kill first then heal um but i can just use holy smite on this thing here's the thing i can't yeah i can't uh keep this divine shield because i can holy smite this but then I'd have to hit this three times, and I've only got two minions and nothing that has charge. So yeah, uh, this this Sunwalker is gonna die without having to pop the Divine Shield. Tip with Piloted Shredder. Be careful about hitting a Doomsayer. Oh wow. Okay, so that there's a little there's a small risk with this. You can always get a Doomsayer and then wipe everything out. Yeah, that's that's actually really bad. Okay, um, what I'm gonna do here is Holy Smite that. Do that, heal it, get a card. Oh, that would have been really, really nice to have earlier. We're gonna kill off these spiders, because if I don't do it, he's gonna do it for me. I'm gonna play Border Fist over. Could have played a Cult Master, so that um, when he killed my Sunwalker, I'd get a card, but that'd be, that'd be a little bit greedy. I'm already doing pretty well card-wise. I just wanna, you know, I, I'm, I'm thrilled if he just hits the Sunwalker and actually takes the three damage, that's fine. So, this is a nifty little dude. I guess I can't really do it much more than once per turn, but I do have those two Light of the Narus. Both of them ended up being into the bottom half of my deck. He really wants a way to get past the Sunwalker so the Tiger can kill my Ogre. The, the Tiger would, would then still live. But it'd be at one health, I might be able to finish it off with Shadow Boxer if I'm a bit lucky. So that's the problem with Piloted Treader. If you're ahead, it can totally screw you over if it gets a Doomsayer out. I mean, the odds of that are small, but possible. I kind of like it though, it's like a niftier version of Harvest Golem. You might get something terrible or it might be really tremendous. It's got Sea Giant, well I've got a Shadow Word Death in here, but uh, yeah, this is this suddenly got interesting. Hey, okay. gotta get past Sea Giant, man he's, he's hanging in there pretty well. Well, there it is, Light of the Naru, unfortunately it's difficult because if I do it to myself, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'll be fully healed. And there's nothing I can hit with a minion that won't die, because 9 damage is kind of a lot of damage. That's unfortunate. Okay. Well, I could heal this to get a card. But I think... Mm, do I want to do this? I could get two random shots off with that. Would that make a difference? I mean, if one of them hit this, I could use the Shadow Sun Cleric. Okay, we're going to drop the Shadow Boxer. Heal up the... Uh, North Shire Cleric, get a card, and fire a shot. Keep in mind, this only hits... Oh, no, it, it hits enemies, so it can hit the opponent, which is unfortunate. Okay. 
Um, I could do this and just waste the Light Warden. Have the Light Warden not happen just so I can fire another shot with this. I don't think that's worth it. So we're going to play the Cult Master now. Ah, oh, man, it would have been nice to hit this Tiger. Well, can't be done, so got to throw that away. That doesn't do anything. Got to throw that away. Oh my god, that would have been nice to start the turn with. Oh man, that would have just been really amazing. Because then I could have just stolen his 9-9 taunt. Well, anyway, if he has any more tricks up his sleeve, then all I can steal those. Let's see what he's going to do. He's going to use the 2-2 to kill my Cult Master, then he can use the 9-4 to kill my North Track Cleric and live to tell about it. Which is unfortunate. I can't use Light of the Naru on myself. Ah, it's harder to use than I thought it would be. Because he hasn't dealt any damage to me. So yeah, he's actually coming back in this. I've still got tons of cards, but uh, a card advantage. But I'm running low on cards in my deck. I might be doing a little bit too good of a job getting cards. Which is a bit of a problem. I mean, if he kills the Cult Master and then the Light and then the North Strike Cleric, this thing stays at one health. There's actually a chance I'll be able to kill it with the with the Shadow Boxer. Ah, damn. Well, I hope he plays something else big so I can mind control it. He does not. He plays this, which isn't great. He can kill my Shadow Boxer. I could mind control this, but it's not that awesome. Shoot. True mind control too late. Alright, he's gonna give it. Is he actually gonna hit my face? Oh my god, he actually hit my face with that. That is a pretty poor life choice, I would say. For a variety of reasons. Now, there's a lot of things that we could do. I could shadow word death, of course, this. I could also mind control this and then run it into the tiger. Which seems like a decent choice because I'd actually get sort of a couple of things. I could use the abomination. That doesn't seem that good. Okay, um, the advantage of Shadow Word Death is I could Light of the Naru myself twice and get a couple of Light Wardens. Is that worth it? I don't get to kill off his team. I can kill off this, but I don't get to kill off the Dark Iron Dwarf in that case. Hmm. All right, let's try it. Just so we can see how this works. So we're gonna Shadow Word Death there. Save the Mind Control in case there's anything else. Light of the Naru myself. Looks like a Light Warden plus 3 health. Unfortunately, the healing happens before the Light Warden spawns, so the Light Warden doesn't get insta-buffed. Okay, so all this happens. We'll heal myself up now. To buff them up both, nice and juicy and plump. We'll kill that. Hit him in the face, because I can't kill it. Play that. He clearly doesn't have any uh, mind control techs. So this has been really fun. I mean, there's, there's some really nifty stuff going on here that hasn't really happened in the arena is with the invention, with the oncoming of Noxtramus. I think Noxtramus added a lot of stuff that's really, really cool for ranked, and you could do cool stuff there with like ancestral spirits and death rattles and things, but I'm feeling like the arena, at least with my very limited play so far, got a lot more exciting stuff with this expansion than with the last one. So Dark Iron Dwarf should really kill this Light Warden, then I can pop the shield to kill the Dark Iron Dwarf. The Light Warden over here, though, becomes something of a problem. Whenever the opponent casts a spell, gain plus two attack. Okay, that's... I really don't like those gain attack things. Granted, the, 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 the two mana version is the one that only gives plus one attack. This is much sturdier to begin with. So, um... This thing is much sturdier to begin with, so it might actually be more relevant. What is this thing? At the end of each player's turn, that player draws until they have three cards. Wow, that's pretty good. Salty dog. All right, how do we do this? Mind control doesn't have any good targets. Jeeves, I don't care whose side he's on. Um, he's gonna be actually he's gonna benefit my opponent a lot more than he's gonna benefit me. I need to kill Jeeves actually. Now that I really think about it. Whenever your opponent plays a spell, okay. I can. Kill Jeeves with these two, heal this up and use that to kill that, or I can heal, use this to kill Jeeves, which is overkill, but I don't get to kill that thing. I'm one shy in that case. Alright, I'm not going to get greedy here. I'm just going to heal myself up. 
Light Warden gets bigged. Kill that thing off. Kill off Jeeves, because I don't want that thing around. And I can play the Salty Dog. But I think I'd rather just play a pair of four drops than this one five drop. This North Shire Cleric still being alive is really rankling for my opponent, because he could have killed it with his Tiger instead of dealing nine completely irrelevant damage to the face. I think that's the kind of mistake a relatively new player would make. He seems to be playing relatively well, so he's not like a terrible player, but that's just one of those things you can learn from experience, is you don't go for the face to get nine damage. Okay, it's looking good. This actually might be my last game of this video, because I spent some time opening packs, and the game has gone on pretty long. We're going to get down to fatigue level somewhat soon here. Alright, Boulder for Stoker, great target for mind control. Let's see if he gives me any reason not to do that. Obviously I could heal the North Strike Cleric for more cards, but again, I don't actually care that much about drawing cards at this point. This was a terrible draft choice. He has another secret, so it's probably an Avenge. That's just the most likely thing nowadays, which means I'm going to let this, uh, let, the, let the secret pop first, and then mind control the Ogre. That is the plan. Salty Dog, interestingly, does kill Boulder Fist Ogres. It's pretty cool for a 5-drop to be able to do that. You have a mech. Game plus 1 plus 1 and not a spare part, but he doesn't have a mech. Mind Vision. Oh, man, if I don't do it now, I'm never going to get to do it. But that means I have to do really wacky stuff to get around this ogre. Okay, so what we're going to do here is... Right away. Pop that guy to see the Avenge. It's not Avenge. Oh, never mind. There's just a bit of an Adem... It's a Redemption. Well, whatever, who cares. So we'll steal that. Don't let Paladins keep creatures. Any pieces. Could I have killed him 8-11? No, I couldn't have killed him. Alright. That, uh, uh, that was a long game, but I wasn't like in much trouble throughout it. I think that was really great. Alright, folks. Thanks. Actually, you know what? Let's do one more game. We can do one more game. There's a few minutes left, so this video is going to go long, but we're not at 45 minutes yet, and I'm having so much fun. Let's see if we can just, uh, you know... Win one more game, finish up my little daily quest, and uh, end this video on a high note. Because it started with a low note, it started with losing a fairly annoying game. And uh, winning would be nice. Yeah, that's 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 the wise thing I have got to say here. You heard it here first, folks. Winning is better than losing. All right, we're up against a mage, Joshmar the mage. Love being a priest if I have to play mages. Okay, do I keep this Murloc Tidehunter? I mean, as the first player, it really seems sort of pointless versus a mage. I'm only going to get to play one of my two drops on turn two. I don't have the coin to be able to play them both. And if I get any three drops, then the two drop just sits in my hand being underwhelming. So this is fine. Let's see if she's got any of those flame cannons. Flame cannon will kill a turn two goblin stalker. That's a, that's a really good spell, that flame cannon. It's basically like a three, or sorry, a two mana shadow bolt that is bad if you have more than one minion out. But still has the chance of being good. So, yeah. Good analysis. Alright, let's do this. The villain's chosen not great against mages between fireball and polymorph as common options to kill basically anything. This thing is a little bit underwhelming. Of course, you know, if you have a high enough health minion that fireball can't kill it, that's, that's one thing. Alright, what you gonna get? Please be something I can kill. It is. Okay. I get off to a pretty nice start here. I will now just uh, buff up my stealthy dude. Give her a card, but both my minions survived. So if she just cycled a card for three mana and dealt the damage, I'm pretty okay with that. I'm gonna drop the Gnomish Inventor next turn and then maybe the Salty Dog after that. This could draw some removal, so I feel more comfortable about playing Villain's Chosen. Panther, I can't really deal with right now. It'll kill whatever she wants. Let's play the Gnomish Inventor. Okay. Hit her in the face because I have no choice. This deck, I don't know, it didn't look good on paper, but it's feeling good so far. It's feeling solid. Salty Dog, very bad against Panther. But the Panther really shouldn't survive this turn unless something very wild happens. I, I can't foresee that possibly happening. Salty Dog also dies to Frostbolt plus Ping. Uh, I wish it were a 6-5, honestly, instead of a 7-4. That would have been better. I'm glad that there is now a neutral 5-mana minion with the correct stats. And I'm glad that it's a pirate because, of course, there's 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 been some, some need for pirate love for quite a while, basically, since Hearthstone was first released. But 7-4 uh, is just not as good as a 6-5 would have been. 6-5, that would have been a massive addition to the game. 
She's thinking a lot, so it seems like... I mean, I do have a pretty big board here. Pretty big-sized board here. Uh, somewhat difficult to deal with. Things like Fireball and Polymorph are overkill right now. She's actually going to kill the Gnomish Inventor? I don't think that's the right pick. I think you got to kill the 3-3 three, because three, the, um, cause, cause the, the higher health, or the higher power is more valuable to get rid of than the higher health. Blue Bill Warrior takes out my Shattered Sun Cleric. And if she has a Flame Cannon, I guess she just didn't have it earlier. All right, so I uh, that's that's good. I will now... What is this? Oh, hey, that's, that's cool. Um, so it's likely to hit something. So let's play Salty Dog. See if she has Frostbolt or another Flame Cannon to deal with it. Doubt she has two Flame Cannons. She could have used Flame Cannon to kill my Taunty Dude. Okay. Got a couple of different options here. Lots of different options. So I could play this to make my Salty Dog bigger. The problem with hitting the Sludge Belcher and using the Bomb Lobber to kill the Sludge is the Salty Dog is then left at one health. And uh, she can just ping it to death, which is... Uh, I mean, uh, can't always get what you want, I guess, but... That's annoying. I'd like to be able to heal it up. But how can I realistically heal it up? Uh, there's really no way. I can leave the Sludge Belcher alone and play the Sunwalker, but then if it gets polymorphed, things look pretty dire. Yeah, it's not great, but I will do it. I'll kill that. We'll play Bomb Lobber. This is random enemy minion, not random enemy. She now gets to kill my 7-1. See, if this were a 6-5, it would be a 6-2 right now. That'd make all the difference in the world, but uh, it's okay. So she kills it off, it's still spending a third of her mana. She now has six cards to my six. I have good answers in the end game and a good minion to play. Still don't know if she doesn't have a polymorph, though, that's the problem. Shadow Word Pain would have been phenomenal here. Unfortunately, it is not to be. Could use Cult Master, run this in, and kill it, but then it's the 3-3, three, three, and what am I supposed to do? So we're gonna just go ahead and play a Sunwalker. Hit her in the face, because there's no point in running it into the elemental, and see if she's got something. I mean, she can ping off the shield, but then the elemental's not hard, hard enough to hit it to kill my Sunwalker, unless she can play Dark Iron Dwarf or Abusive Sergeant. She can also, of course, play Polymorph. And for how well this started off for me, and how mighty my turn 4 board looked, Flame Cannon plus Bluegill Warrior really helped her out on turn 4. Knife Juggler? Okay, so she's going to try to kill off my divine shield with a minion, which is sensible. No, she's just gonna silence it. Alright, seems reasonable. Alright, so it's a 4-4. Four, four. Hmm. Well, nothing super great I can do here, unfortunately. I could play the Cult Master, run in, and kill it, get a card, but then it's just the, it's just the son of a Cult Master here. I don't really like my options very much. No, I don't. All right, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play a Tactical Cult Master. The purpose of this is just to make her have to kill it first. Also play Loot Hoarder because it cycles for a card. Might as well. So we're gearing up for the end game. I mean, if she plays anything huge, I steal it with Mind Control, and she doesn't have a Polymorph to kill it with, I could do really well. But if she never plays anything big, I'm going to have two dead cards, and I'm going to be really, really screwed. So uh, it really just depends on... Whether she has a bunch of medium-sized things or one big thing, and if she has one big thing, I could be in much better shape. Flushing and Ghoul is bad sign. Not gonna play anything big this turn. Sengen is pretty big, but it doesn't die to Shadow or Death. It's not worth mind controlling. She didn't leave enough mana to ping with, so that's something, I guess. And she's just gonna kill off my biggest stuff. Okay, fair enough. Big ol' Flesh and Ghoul. Hey, I do actually have a target for Shadow or Death. I'm gonna use it. I've already got mind control here. The question is, do I run that in? I can make this a 4-5. Four, four, Doesn't quite kill the engine, unfortunately. Shoot. I think I'd rather just get the card, honestly. So we'll just get the card first, see if I can get anything better than a Goblin Stalker to play. The answer is, I can't. This doesn't seem right to drop down right now. Alright, we'll do it. Let's buff this up. So I got a 4 7 stealth. Can't be flame stricken or anything. Here, I hope she plays a really huge minion. She knows that there's this card that's been here for a long time, so she probably knows not to drop anything big and try to clear out my mind control first. Hopefully, though, she doesn't have enough options in this four card hand to do it. If she's holding any fireballs or polymorphs, they're just useless right now. Okay, that is worth mind controlling for sure. If she has anything better than that, then so be it. But can't really complain about that at all. 
Okay, so again, it's a situation where I've got the great board here and she has to respond. She had a really great response last time it happened, which was turn four. Does she have anything this time? She could use a fireball or polymorph to kill the ogre. Plus pinging, of course. Then there's teams to take out this 4 4. She takes out the 4 4 in high style and drops a bunch of board presence stuff on here. Well, it's pretty good for her. Pretty good. Really wish I had a Northshire Cleric instead of this Shadow Boxer, but I'll take what I can get. Kill that. Heal it. Hopefully, it hit this thing. Nope, it hits her face. Dang it. Flame Strike would clear my board now, so I don't want to play either of these things because then I would just end up losing stuff for no reason. So let's wait and see what she wants to do. She can throw both of these at my Ogre and ping it to kill it. I still have an ogre myself here. She's gonna go up a card, which, which worries me a little bit. I have Power Word Shield in here and a North Shark Cleric that might give me cards. She has a Flame Strike. She'll have to throw the Dragonling away. Okay, so my board's clear. She did respond. She managed to get it done. Damn it. I don't know. myself up. All right, so the target dummy is just gonna die, but what else is it gonna do? It wasn't gonna do anything better than that. It protects the shredder from dying to the mechanic plus ping right now, but if she has more removal, I am gonna lose this game in a rather heartbreaking fashion. Blue Bill Warrior number two is just as good as the last one. It lets her get some kills. She can kill this shredder now. We must cleanse the sun well. Alright, she doesn't even have to ping it. She gets another minion out. Luckily, this thing... Oh, no, this thing's gonna die now. This thing is gonna die because she can just ping it. Oh, god damn it. Wow, she's ahead. She's way ahead here. Luckily, she didn't have anything else, but Jesus. Alright. So, Holy Smite, I have to think about carefully. It will deal three damage, thanks to Pyromancer. So, I can't I can't clear her board without, without losing mine. I can throw... The Murloc Scout here, Holy Smite this, but then it'll still be at one health. Or I can run the Scout here and Holy Smite that, but then this would be there. So yeah, I can't, um, unfortunately, I cannot clear her board and keep my Pyromancer alive. All right, well, doesn't really matter how I do it then. So we'll do this, we'll do that, and then we'll do that. So, so we have a top deck war and she's got three cards ahead of me. Ah, oh, so annoying. Do I have anything left in the tank? I've used Shadow or Death. I've used Mind Control. She has... Are you kidding me? God damn it. That's so good right here. Well, I'm totally fucked. I think I'll draw a card and conceal unless it's something really good that I forgot I had. Yeah, she just plays minions. Nothing I can do. Ah, uh, yeah, that's not... That's not a Light Warden's not going to save me. So, instead of ending on a high note, we ended on a low note. That sucked a load of ass dongs. She just had too much removal for me to be able to deal with. And card draw won the game for her as well. Oh, I got a golden Murloc Raider though, so everything is okay. Thanks for watching, folks. Please like and or subscribe if you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, stick around because I'm going to have some more videos coming up soon. Take care, everybody.